Back again, we have Jan Jonas from EVGA. Great to be back. Uh, Jan, what have you brought with you this time? So this time, again, we have an open bench table. We have the Z270 FTW K motherboard. We have the CLC EVGA coolers here as well with the 280 radiator. Then we have the G3 power supply who's powering everything. But the main focus today really is the EVGA GeForce GTX 1080 Ti FTW3 hybrid. Wow. And so what, what does hybrid mean? So, um, hybrid you might have heard maybe uh, in, in the car industry. Uh -huh. um, there's uh, newer cars which have the uh, traditional engine uh, combined with the electronic engine. And it's something sort of that. So we have the traditional way um, right here with the, with the air, obviously, the um, air cooling here. And then we have the all-in-one cooling solution for the GPU and also the memory over here. So it's kind of a combined uh, cooling solution. That's why it's called hybrid. I see. So it's... it's it's effectively moving part of the cooling system off of the card onto a separate kind of radiator unit here. Exactly. So how it works exactly is um, it's an all-in-one cooling solution. So there is no maintenance. You don't have to do custom tubing for water cooling or anything like that. It's really just plug and play. And it comes with a radiator, 120 millimeter. It comes with a fan as well. And then you have that uh, GPU block, uh, which we will take, uh, later take a look and a little bit closer. So with this hybrid system, um, what are the actual performance benefits? So with the hybrid system, um, I think there are two big points which, which we have to point out here. It's, um, first of all, the, the silent, uh, more silent operation you have. So when people really want to have a very silent operation, silent system, then you take a look at that. And the other point is that you get much better cooling for the GPU, which gives you a higher overclocking capability or in total just uh, a more stable system. And that's the big, uh, two big advantages you got with the hybrid system, yeah. So last time you were here with uh, another FTW3 card, yes. uh, that had ITX technology. Exactly. Does this card also have that? Yeah, it also has ICX technology. And um, as we mentioned before, there are nine additional sensors, right? And there are also three sensors only responsible for the power part for the VRMs basically mm -hmm. and because we have that hybrid solution right with the with the fan right here which is only responsible for the power this fan is basically going by this sensor so these sensors will define how the fan spins here and at the very beginning when the temperatures are low in the power area of course the fan will not spin so that's again the silent operation we talked about Excellent. before so it's not spinning when it doesn't need to spin basically. exactly there's basically a fan curve which you can also set as we explained before in the in the icx video yeah excellent so it's just fully customizable exactly for all uses exactly that's fantastic and what, we, what I also didn't mention yet is, um, this is another point which, which I really like, is the, the, the clean look on it. Mm. Uh, we, we have here actually some sleeves around the tubing, which gives you first of all a clean look, a nice look, but also uh, you have to imagine you have to sometimes fit it in very small cases, right? Yeah. So bending is also a point which is quite important that you actually can bend those. And if you take a look in here, they're really quite bendable um, yeah. without any problem. They can they're not going to really, kink or anything. Yeah, they, they can go even quite tight like wow, that yeah. and still work. So how does it all actually work? Um, to take a look at that, I actually brought another card, another FTW3 hybrid, where we can take a closer look. Um, I already removed the screw, so we have it a little bit easier to remove. Starting maybe with the back plate. Mm -hmm. uh, the back plate, as you can see here, is similar to the FTW3 version, also works again um, to dissipate the heat. It's basically also inside the cooling system, and we just take it apart now. Uh, I see the you can see pads, the thermal yeah. pads in here as well. Yeah, there's the two parts of that, so we just take this away. Mm -hmm. And then we turn around the cart. So, and here's the shroud. So as I said, I removed already all the screws so we can take this apart. You have to take care if you really want to do that by yourself. Sure. There are some uh, little connectors right here, but I already removed them. So now then we come to the actual cooling solution right here. What we have here um, to start with, I take maybe this also apart, is this is the copper base. The copper base where is the pump included, mm -hmm. which uh, basically uh, controls uh, the, the, the flow inside here. And you can actually control that also with our software, the pump speed as well. But what is really unique in here, so let me take this apart just very quickly. As you can see here, you have also uh, a dedicated copper plate in here, right? There's not just the copper base. This copper base is responsible for the GPU cooling, but there is another dedicated copper plate around, which is actually connected to the copper base to cool the memory ICs. Right, you don't usually see that, do you? 
Yeah, you usually don't see that, but it's very important, especially on this generation, not just to take a look at the GPU, but also yeah. the memory IC, and also yeah. the power. So what we've done here is that's why we install this extra copper plate and cooling the memory basically with uh, these uh, thermal pads you can see here. Yeah. Yeah. Excellent. Yeah, and that's just comes back here on the memory ICs like that. And then here we have a massive heatsink. So this massive heatsink is um, again for the for the power. Really, the whole power segment is here, and then this fan, the, the air fan, is basically responsible for this part. And again, controlled by the ICX sensors on the back. So it's quite a sophisticated cooling system, this. And it it's, is. It's a lot more thorough than you might find on other cards. Exactly. Yeah. Oh, wow, fantastic. Okay, so we've seen the hybrid cooling system, we've got the ICX, and obviously we've got the actual power of a GTX 1080 Ti. Um, can we actually see the performance? Of course, sure. So I've already opened here our Precision XOC tool again, right? Um, you can see the temperatures here already. We are at 28 degrees in here, which is already very low. Um, but we will run a benchmark now, uh, the new Super Precision from Unijoin um, in 4K. So let's just hit the benchmark button on one. With Precision XOC, um, you have that on-screen feature, that mm -hmm. OSD, and uh, as you can see there, um, I've, I've also um, selected the, the actual temperatures of the power here as well, so you can read them there. Yeah, GPU temperature is now at 32. It will rise, of course, um, but I mean, we have, an we have to be fair, we have an open system here. Sure. In, in a closed system, we, but we would still under full load and the gaming, if you game like two, three, four hours even, yeah. um, you probably wouldn't reach more than really 50 degrees. It's yeah. already max. So I suppose yes. in a case as well, you've actually got an airflow there. So yeah, exactly. in some ways it would be even cooler inside the... Yeah, I mean, the GPU temperature really is, um, with, the, with the normal air cooling, you, you can heat, reach like uh, maybe 65 degrees. So with a with liquid one, you would maximum reach 50 degrees. So this is already a pretty, pretty big uh, advantage here. So and now we are like 39, yeah. 40 maybe. I mean, that's that's quite a low temperature, isn't it, for a GPU? Yeah, it, it, definitely is. it definitely is. Yeah. So, so does that mean you've got some sort of headroom there to do some overclocking with the car? Definitely, definitely, yeah. That's, I mean, you already, with the GPU Boost uh, 3.0 from NVIDIA, you already get a little bit more headroom for that one yeah. already when you have a lower temperature. But there's, as you just mentioned, there's definitely also more headroom by manual overclocking the card as well, yeah. Fantastic. We're running at the moment at... Uh, yeah, 1950, 1980 sometimes uh, megahertz, but there's definitely headroom to, to go over two gigahertz here easily, yeah. It's getting an amazing average frame rate there as well, isn't it? Yeah, we are at the moment at uh, 76 average frames per second uh, at 4K resolution, yeah. And that whole hybrid system now is just managing all the temperatures and everything as obviously the car exactly. heats up. Yeah. It's just controlling it all itself. So you can actually see that it's running and the, the uh, temperature of the PWM are at 42, 44, 44. These are the three sensors. But the fan is just not spinning yet yeah. because it just don't have to at the moment. Yeah. I mean, if it hits, I think the, the default is like 48, 47. So if it hits this, it will start to spin. If you say for yourself, okay, 40, it should already spin like 35 or yeah. 40 even. And then you can define that in uh, our tool with the fan curve very easily. Excellent. And at least this benchmark is really pushing the card now, isn't it? Really yeah, pushing it, is. it hard. It is. Excellent. So we can even see visually because of that fan that it's got that extra extra headroom for cooling even. Definitely, just, yeah. That's fantastic. I that's mean, it's cool. running now quite a time now and we are at 45 degrees GPU yeah. temperature. Which is still very low. It is, it is, yeah. Okay, so we've been running the benchmark quite a few times now, yeah. and that fan has finally kicked in. Yeah, it finally kicked in. We, we checked, we are now at uh, 51, 50, and it kicked in at 50 uh, degrees Celsius. And um, like I mentioned before, you can really customize that with Precision X or C after you like. Excellent. Yeah. So it's got a lot of capability for overclocking then? It definitely has. And about the overclocking, we go into more detail in another video. Okay, well, thank you very much, Jan, for coming in again. And hopefully we'll see you again soon with another product. Of course, I'm looking forward to it. Thank you.